G'day guys and welcome back to Maddie's Workshop. As you probably all know, I've got a new lathe. Um, got the AL960B. Um, absolutely thrilled with the machine. It's extremely, extremely nice to use. Um, so nice to have a geared head where you can just change your speeds. You've got a wide variety of... Um, of feed rates yeah it's just it's chalk and cheese from the new one to me other little one that i that i replaced which i still have and it's currently in bits i'm going to show you the reason why i did upgrade um i upgraded and went bigger because you know if you're gonna if you've got to replace it you may as well go to the one you really want and that's what i did now, the, the, with the little lathe, I bought that brand new. About two months into having it, it done the headstock bearings. Um, I pulled the covers off, or the plate off the front, and what I found in there was pretty disgusting. It was just full of sand. Um, and I mean, if I can find the photos that I took of there, I got nearly a handful of sand just out of the headstock and I spent a day just just scratching and scrubbing and and it just wouldn't stop. So it just you know just there's that much sand just coming out of the casting, you just rub it and more sand. You cleaned all out, you rub it, more sand. Um so I ended up spraying <clears throat> I put three magnets in there. Um so if there's any cast iron filings or you know crap in there it's stuck to the to the magnets hopefully and i sprayed it full of white lithium grease spray grease which sort of caked everything to the sides um unbeknownst to me it was also bad in the carriage uh, half much chewed out which i believe some of that was my fault Probably 90% of that was my fault for not... I thought the lead screw was clean. But it's that fine. Like, I'm not trying to make excuses. It was that fine. I thought it was clean, but it actually wasn't. Um, the lead screw, it's, I think it's just... I forget what it is, 16 TPI, whatever. Not, no, it's not that. It's fine as shit. Anyway, I'll show you in a minute. But it chewed the half nuts out and it was getting hard when you've got it in auto traverse and yet you know you're just doing a normal cut you couldn't get it out of gear you push on the lever and it wouldn't click out you had to literally get the hand wheel wind it get the load off the off the lever and pull it out of gear and it slowly got worse and when you use a machine all the time you don't sort of pick it up well, I didn't anyway, that it was getting worse and worse and worse. So I got the shits with it one day and I pulled it all down. What I found, where the lead screw goes through the carriage and retains the worm gear, them holes actually wore in an oval. And the lead screw is actually lifting up. It's not meshing the worm gear and the worm drive properly. Um... And that's what's making it bind. So, long story short, contacted the manufacturer. Um, they did supply the headstock bearings. Three months out of warranty now, <laughs> as it always happens. Anyway, they done me a good deal, and I can't complain about the deal they gave me on the new one. So, that out of the way, I'm going to have a, an attempt at fixing the carriage um, worst case scenario it can't get any worse um, and the yeah, worst case scenario is it just doesn't have auto feed just strictly for turning no threading that's what I'll be you know, if, if I screw it up so the idea is with the two holes which I'll show in a second is to bore them out somehow oversize uh, replace that with bronze bushes or brass bushings and everything's back sweet again. Um, 
it's not going to be real easy. It's going to be a real pain in the ass, I think, to try and do it. I don't know how. I've never done anything like this. Only, I've only just done the, the head on the Cincinnati. But, um, reground that, but that's about the only sort of technical thing I've done, you know, in this sort of restraints of work. But anyway, I'm going to, I'll spin you around, we'll have a look. I've still got the uh, carriage and lead screw all together. Um, uh, I'll spin you around and show you what I'm talking about, and hopefully it might make a bit better sense too, because I'm absolute crap at explaining stuff like this. So... Let's have a look. Right. Here we got the carriage upside down, or the apron, should I say. So you can see the, these are the two holes that are chewed out. Um, as you can see, if I just get the end here, we'll go up like that. And you can see it's wanting to come up and rub underneath this part of the casting here, which is what's when it's under load it lifts so it should be back down there like that but you can see how much it's how many can pick it up there or not but see how much it's worn so and you can see how much i don't know if you can pick that up look at the worm gear it's a bastard to hold see how much it's moving in there how much is slipped and it lifting up off that off this gear here and the worm and sort of it's only just just engaging so I'm sorry about if I'm explaining this all ass about front but that's just me pull this out Keyway in there somewhere. That's the key. Right so I don't know whether you can pick it up on the camera or not. Yeah, that way. Which way have I got to turn it? That way. You can see them holes are worn in an oval. So, the one there might be better to see. Anyway, I'll get a strip down and we'll have a good look then, eh? I've got it all stripped down. And I'm hoping this is showing up on the video. But, I'll show you here. See all this stuff here? It comes off. That's just sand. If you can hear that or not. Down in here. It's just clumps of it. Look at this. So that's that's what's been the issue. Um, like every corner, you can see it. See so even in there. It's not good. So, but this is what we've got to try and fix. And you can see that elongated hole there. Looks like an egg. <laughs> But um, what I'm hoping is, well, that shit just falling out. What I'm hoping is I can, I can pick up on the bottom section of the hole here, and roughly indicate off that. I'm hoping. So from here to here, that's a good third of the hole. I indicate off that and bore it out i know it's going to be fairly thin on this well it's not going to be super thin but it's going to reduce it a bit just hope it'll be okay and then 
very bush it. So that's what I've got to try and do. <clears throat> to do it horizontally would be the way to go on the Cincinnati. Then I can just bolt that, you know, clamp that straight to the table like so and then bring the cutter in from here. But I've got no tooling for the, to do the horizontal side. Uh, I've got no 50 taper tooling. Um, well, no, no, you know, arbors or anything. So what I'm really left with is to try and stand it on its end and spend a fair bit of time trying to try and indicate it in correctly and have a go at it that way. Um, after talking with a mate um, on how to uh, align the boring bar with these with these ears here, um, with the indicator, with a tense indicator like a test indicator, I can't get enough sweep until it hits somewhere on the casting. You know, I can only sweep a quarter of the hole. Um, it's just it's a pain in the bum. And he suggested make up a, um, a, a test rod, basically. Um, so I measured what I could of the existing hole. Um, and I got it pretty darn good. So I machined up a, another head bolt. Um, and this is, when I measure with a micrometer, it's about three tenths difference, or two tenths from end to end, end. So it's pretty darn good. I held it in a, in a collet, um, bring it down, I set an indicator off the head of the, the mill, test indicator, and just touched it on the side. And then I moved each axis until I seen um, it was down in this corner, which is the existing hole, going by the wear pattern in there, until I just seen some movement on the, on the rods, so some deflection. Um, and that's how I, yeah, that's how I've located the hole. So I know it's not the exact right way to do it probably, and it's as rough as guts, but, yeah, I think it'd be good enough. It's going to be better than what it's had. It got in there anyway. That's if the boring bar works. So now all I've got to do now is bore it. I'm up to the, yeah, I'm right to start boring it now. Not too sure if you can see in there or not. But the lighting, it's but it's cutting from about there to around here at the moment. Yeah, or around there, I think. Get my earth from here. There's something to point with. So it's cutting from here to about here. So all this is uncut yet. That's where it's all egg shaped. But it's getting a pretty good finish. Sorry about the lights here. That's only feeding at three quarters of an inch a minute on auto feed. So it's going to take a bit of time. But I'll get there. So lunchtime for me now.
I'm at 756,000 at the, and I just advanced it another 10,000 on the uh, on the head. Um, I've slowed the spindle speed down a fair bit. I was getting a little bit of chatter. Um, it seems to be cutting a bit better now. Actually, now I've slowed it down. Still feeding at one inch per minute. So we're slowly getting out. I've got a piece of brass so I can get two bushes out of. Um, and I'd like to take this to around 800 down. And that'll give me a fair bit of um, fair bit of soil in the bush. Running pretty fine on bloody on clearances here, I tell you. Alright, we're getting there. So, all things going well, this should be the last pass. Um, this should put me that close to 800 thou. Um, 800 thou with the hole be close enough and if I've done my sums right um, that'll give me about a hundred thousand thickness of sidewall on the bushing and around 16 thousand clearance between the bushing and the lead screw so that's if I've done everything correctly I've done everything correct, you got the numbers right and you should be pretty should be pretty well on the market. On the, on the market, hopefully. I may have to do a spring pass, I don't think so. That's the seventh hour on the on the dial, so it's the last 14 hour. Fumble fingers. Okay. Spin you around. We are four tenths up. <laughs> well, I am absolutely shocked with that. I honestly didn't think I was going to hit it like that. I thought I would have been, you know, two or three thou out. So, you can see it there. Spin it around. So it's five tenths. I can live with that. Right here, yeah, we're gonna make these bushes. I've already made a little start on them. It's just out of brass. I wanna make I'm gonna make the um the ID exactly the same as what the worm gear is, which is five hundred and ninety-three thousand. Um, I've got around 41 thou to take off, but I'm just going to sneak up on it. Um, I don't want it a sloppy fit, just want the same as this.
So, <coughs> 75, should be right on it. Or well, half a thou under. Just double check myself. Yep, 589 and a half. I'm kissing the dimension there. Double check itself again. Yep, 589 and a half. We've got a carriage stop set up down here. Um, this bush is going to be 350 thou long. Um, and 801 thou in diameter. <laughs> Seven tenths. That'll do. <coughs> um, I'd want to put a little tiny shoulder on this as well. So I guess we're showing the hex off, I think. The bare hex off there. Okay, I can part these off now. clean up the dag on the end and now we have one bush I'll make the next one off camera I'm not going to bore you twice okay I've, I've put one bush in so far um, just going to show you the way I'll put these in I've got as a bolt running through there big wash of this side socket and just gently pulling it in Hopefully it's going to pull it in square and nothing go wrong. going tight there now so it's up it's up on the flange on that outer flange here yeah, so that's in I 
pretty happy with them. I made them both the same, but this one could have been a touch longer. Because that, obviously that cast in there is a bit wider, but fuck it, so be it. What it is is what it is. So, anyway, the bushes are in. I suppose we could slip the lead screw through there and have a little gander, couldn't we? heaps better and looking at the gap on this casting that has been machined the gap is pretty even so I think this will be fairly successful how long the brass bushes last I don't know whether they're going to chew out quick whether I may need to make bronze ones or cast iron ones I don't know it's just going to be trial and error but anyway, we know what to do next time if it does stuff up. Anyway, I've got to get into some cleaning here and get this all cleaned up and get ready to sit back in the machine. Get all the gears and everything back in it. Try and remember it all went back together, but it's a good start. Well, that's about as clean as I can get it. I end up hitting it with a... Um, die grinder and a burr and that's just some of the crap that I did collect and half of it blew off see it it's not real good eh <laughs> anyway that's a lot cleaner than what it was still got a tiny bit in there I missed um, it's a lot better than what it was and there it is all back together finally um, I did have to do a just take ram them out just a little bit wasn't very much at all I did make it a fraction tight but um, I'm going to get it back on the machine and see how it runs well guys it's all back together and I do apologise I'm going to have to do this um, yeah I'm going to have to do this by hand this camera I've just broke my bloody camera, magnetic camera base, so, might be a little bit wobbly. Um, so it's all back together, and I'm happy to tell you all that it's been a success. Um, I'll do a test cut here, and I'll knock it in and out of gear, where I never used to be able to do, able to do that before, I had to, um, Grab the hand wheel and take the pressure off the hand, like take the load off off this lever so I could knock it out. So that's out again, that's in gear. You'd have to take the load off and then knock it out of gear. So now I don't, I've got a, I started off a cut here, which is about as much as I'd normally take. I don't, I wouldn't want to take much more it just doesn't handle it so I'll just put it in the gear bring it a bit closer eh? so I'm going to knock it out I'm going to hold the camera me that is way better than it was before heaps better I'm pretty darn happy with that I can tell you well, I'd nearly class that as a really good success. Um, I was a bit worried it wasn't going to work. Um, I was worried shitless that I didn't get it aligned properly when I actually bought it on the Cincinnati. Anyway, I am tickled pink that 
I actually had a had a, a win there because um, now the good thing about it now like I've sold the old Mars Hercules lathe um, just waiting for the borders to open up and the fellow can come and pick that up um, once that's gone then the little lathe will go over where that is and get folded down and it's going to be handy having the big lathe and the little lathe still that I can still you know, if I've got something set up in the big one, I've got a small job I can just nick over there and use the little one. And the kids can actually learn to cut threads and everything on the little one too. So when they master that one, then I'll let them on the new big one. Until then, they're not touching it. <laughs> anyway, I am Tickle Pink, and thanks everybody for hanging around. And I know I didn't get any footage of me putting the bloody thing back together or you've all seen people pull shit apart and put back together so I'm yeah I'm really stoked beside myself actually to be honest super excited all right guys thanks very much and see you on the next video and please take care eh? Hooroo.